Banded pull-ups are not only for beginners. They can in fact be used to assist the development of elite strength and hypertrophy. And I'll be personally using them as a frequent variation to acquire a 200 pound weighted pull-up. So I would all encourage you to purchase at least one band. Monster Mini being preferable and reintroduce what was once considered to be a progression exercise. Because when used correctly, this can help you break through plateaus, get you to a whole new level. And I'm gonna prove that to you today with facts and logic. So let's get right into it. First things first, in the frontal plane, with higher degrees of humeral elevation, which is typically going to be a dead hang, or having your arms be fully straightened out, your lats actually don't have the best leverage. You are not inducing a maximum way to stretch, although it is still hypertrophic as hell, especially for muscles like the teres major. And I would encourage you to all train full range of motion for proper shoulder health, getting more out of less weight, joint strength specificity as it pertains to a calisthenics athlete trying to maximize his one rep max and consistent reps. So everyone's gotta do full wrong, but it's true that as you go through the range of motion, and now we're around nine degrees of humeral adduction, that is when the lats actually have good leverage. And so it is the top portion, which so many guys are doing partials up there, where at least your eyes are reaching the bar or going a bit beyond, basically that whole zone over here is what gives you the best lat squeezes. That said, it can often be difficult to get into this position, and this is where beginners will typically fail, and when you're really strong, that zone is a very common weakness and is arguably the most difficult part. This is why guys can't get their one-arm pull-ups. This is why guys fail, aka getting red lights in competition. They can't get their chin over the bar. So what's a good way of solidifying that strength development. Well, like I said before, I'm not gonna recommend partials. So full romp, 90 degrees, little reps like this, because it's still less hypertrophic as a whole. And we wanna take out the bottom portion. Like we want dynamic range of motion, but we wanna do it in a way where we're changing the joint angles, which is set by gravity. This is not a machine where you can adjust the resistance profile as you go, like what you see with Prime Fitness. No, we're talking about calisthenics, right? So how are we supposed to change the strength curve such that we can better get into the top position without having to yank, kip, or be extremely explosive, while at the same time really making us grind through those upper joint angles and potentially getting even more range of motion as is in the case of doing chest to bar pull-ups? Well, obviously, the simple solution is reverse bands. This has been in everybody's face since the start, yet no one recognizes it, except for a couple like the one and only John Meadows. Like, it's crazy how everything he said years ago was on point, totally ahead of his time. One of the few bodybuilders who understood the nuances of resistance profiles. And so when you use the reverse bands, yeah, there's still weight in the bottom, obviously, but it's a deloaded effect, such that the top is further emphasized. And because you can now use a controlled cadence, so you don't have to viciously get up there, you're not just gonna be chin over the bar. You'll have about one to two inches more range of motion. And this is great for self-limiting variations like chest to bar pull-ups, because oftentimes what limits you is how fast you are in the bottom. But you still had the strength to do this. That's what I'm saying, you're still team full ROM. And the bottom is already effective just with your own body weight. But now, the top portion is being prioritized. That's it. So for lat bias pull-ups, you want some wings, such that you can freaking fly. Reverse bands can arguably be better from a hypertrophy standpoint. As bold as that may sound, especially for the super wide grip pull-ups, this is a nice modern twist on an old school exercise. Because especially when you go weighted, 
say hitting between 25 and 45 pounds, which is not a lot of absolute low, but it's about 50% harder than using a narrower grip, at least for most people. When you go heavy with the bands, you will actually be able to maintain chest to bar, or at least be more than just your eyes hitting the point. So it's not just 90 degrees and then a little bit more, like your elbow is gonna be low while having weight be suspended. It's about proximity to failure. Without the bands, maybe you would have gotten six chests of bar, then four regular range of motion. Whereas now, you can get eight chests of bar, then only two regular wrong. And then you can even do lengthen partials immediately after by taking off the bands. So kind of like a reverse drop set. But this actually leads me on to the topic of going weighted, which is what I want you doing when you can do 15 to 20 banded pull-ups. There's different setups and having tried all of them, I've narrowed it down to about three, which I believe you'll actually do. The most common way is attaching a band directly to the top of your pull-up bar, putting your foot inside of it, and with a dip belt, you just clip on to your loading pin. And you can either have the foot be in front of the plate, behind, or to the side. Truth is, it doesn't matter, the fact is, you now have the accommodating resistance effect. In the bottom position, the band is fully lengthened, Then, as you go through, it starts to short. But it'll never hit that point where you have a 100% deloaded effect. So in reality, this is your overloading variation. So the strength curve is being modified 100%, but you're gonna have to put on some more plates in order to equalize what would normally have been done with less weight not having the bands on. But here, it's like someone is spotting you throughout the entire range of motion. You got a guy pressing up on your feet ever so slightly, but it only assists you a little bit in the bottom, if that makes sense. Hope this is not too confusing. If you have any questions, please let me know. That's one way of doing it. The other way, which I think is number one, this form is basically the same that you do with banded dips, where the weight is around your neck, and then in your hands, you can choose which in-between finger you like. Some it's going to be the, the ring area. For me, I like a little thumb index tie-in. Grab onto the bar, and what you'll find is that the band will be stretched out to around arm's length, such that in the bottom, you're getting some decent spring, but the moment you start to bend your arms ever so slightly, the moment you hit the 50% point, the band is barely helping you out at all. And then when you get to the lockout, in this case being chin over the bar or beyond, there's no assistance whatsoever. Like the band is not even tight on you. It is completely loose. Might as well not be there. That right there is going to be the closest to a raw weighted pull-up. And therefore, you really can't go that much heavier. And in many cases, you will lift the exact same weights. Maybe just get a couple more reps, but... Sensation wise, it's almost identical. And this is hella specific for building top end strength and it has the advantage of only helping you with higher levels of humoral elevation. But in lower levels, which is what you're trying to bias here, it's basically non-existent. And recognize that depending how you grab the bar, the band will stretch more. So that already gives you plenty of joint angles to work with. And then another little twist on that would be attaching it to your neck and your lat armpit area at the same time. So this is very simple. Just take the band, put it directly behind you, stretch out your arms overhead, and then the top portion of the band, place it on the back of the neck instead of just keeping it low. Because what you'll find is, if you're not really thick, that band can slide up in the middle of your set, and now you're gonna be stuck in this position to begin with. Like this is the end destination as you're doing your reps. So you might as well start in the first place. And I'm just saying that most of you will not be able to maintain a low band position on your back because you don't have enough pop going on. And even if you did, there's still that risk as you get sweatier, more fatigued, etc. You do what you want, everything works. I'm trying to be as objective as possible here, but that's how you would load the exercise. And also know that by introducing reverse bands, you are reducing overuse injuries because Realistically, how many grips can you play around with? You got 
chin up close, chin up medium, chin up wide. Same thing with pronation. Then we got all your neutral grip bars, super wide. Great. But those all have the exact same resistance profile. Whereas the bands, you can constantly rotate them through. Mini band, monster mini band. At most, a light. I suppose average could be used if you're a super heavyweight, but you got three different band tensions combined with all the grips. And what's very different here is the fact that where you grab onto the bar, that changes how far the band is stretched out. What I mean is the narrower you grab, the more stretched. So you get more assistance. Whereas the super wide grip stuff helps you less. So you can mix and match. Wide grip, you can attach your band to your back and your neck or do the foot method. Or if you're really strong already, put around your neck. And then when you do your narrow grip, yeah, just put it directly on the neck because you're still gonna get slightly more assistance. And for that, you can use a mini band rather than a monster mini band. You know what I mean? Like you can really have some fun here and you'll basically never run into joint problems because of all the endless variations you have. I guess I would compare it to someone who's running conjugate for the bench and they're only gonna do raw, but they're just gonna change the grips. Like, yes, that will work. You can get away with that for months, but does it beat mixing in bands and chains? Absolutely not. It's the same thing with calisthenics and that's why I'm gonna be showing reverse band pull-ups in my new calisthenics program. Not only that, but also with the chains and bands from the bottom as well, because I really do believe in changing resistance profiles to keep you injury free. And then with the reverse band, one more thing, okay, is that you're deloading the shoulders a bit, which is great for guys who have difficulties in the dead hang. So that said, I wanna end off on one more thing, which is the topic of auto-regulation and how banded pull-ups can be great for keeping the same intensity and exact technique as you get more fatigue throughout your sets. They're also great for drop sets and perfect, flawless, legendary, beautiful, applicable to every beginner and intermediate lifter who's using percentage backdowns. Sounds wordy, but let me explain. If you can lift 25 to 45 pounds on the weighted pull up for low repetitions, whether you're doing singles, doubles, or triples, which you're gonna do if you're trying to get as strong as possible. And then you wanna do percentage backdowns right after, maybe a three by 10 with three reps in reserve, as you see me do with my bench press. That in itself is unlikely with body weight only because the weight, okay, if you're basing this off your total body weight is going to be below what you weigh right now. So if you're 180 pounds doing 45 pound weighted pull-ups, that's 225, right? Well, if I do 70% of that, that's 157.5 pounds. So what you're being prescribed is 23 pounds less. In other words, you're still going to complete the three by 10, but it'll never be with three reps in reserve. You're going to have more grinders, certainly some failure in there, and absolutely some technique breakdown. And that is why reverse bands can be so useful, which means people who say banded pull-ups are for beginners, which I already showed was false, should actually be rephrased to banded pull-ups are for beginners and intermediates because it's only the advanced and elite guys who have very strong pull-ups that aren't gonna be in negative numbers when doing percentage backdowns, trying to be hella precise, unless you're using an extremely low percentage of your one or max with far more reps in reserve, which I don't really condone. I generally stay in the two to three RIR zone. And I wanna be able to program in the same way rather than doing more sets to compensate. If I'm able to use the same methods for my bench press and squat, I want that to be one-to-one -one with my weighted pull-ups, which for me, I've always had because my percentage backdowns are still weighted. Then if we do go back to beginners, let's say you can only hit five reps on your first set of bodyweight pull-ups to failure. Are you now on your second set gonna do four reps and three on your third? Are you gonna get out of the optimal hypertrophy zones just because I'm strong enough to do it without a band. Like, it would be to your benefit to keep those reps at five. Or you can do top set back down. 
So your first set, five reps of failure. Second set, you put on those reverse mini bands, so the less tension the better. Go to failure again, maybe get eight to 10 reps if possible. I would say that's gonna give you much more quality volume rather than trying to muster up these ugly repetitions just because you got this ego that, yeah, I did it. You know, like I'm, I'm still doing reverse bands when I use my <laughs> super wide grip pull-ups. And then when we talk about down workouts, it's even more difficult on pull-ups such that many times you won't be able to get the prescribed reps. You're just that fatigued from all the other sets beforehand. So what are you gonna do? You really have two choices. Either you go to extreme failure and introduce something like rest pause or you increase the rest intervals. And that's not the point of those workouts. So if you did a 12 down, so 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, you can count. And now you're at five down and you're not able, you're getting around three repetitions. Am I gonna make you dead hang it and just keep grinding it out? Like sure, you're getting the effective reps, but now your recovery threshold might be exceeded. You might have issues the next day. Like you're gonna be sore. You now gotta lower your frequency, the overall volume of your program, especially if this is supplemental to what you're already doing in the gym. The smarter option would just be to do reverse band at the end. And that's what I did two years ago during global events. Like now I can do a 15 down pull up workout straight. Back in the day, I wasn't able. So when I get down to the bottom, I'll put on the reverse band. And that's when I started to realize, yeah, there's something more to this. And then I saw guys like Mechanimal going weighted with this. Like I can go on and on. And this video has already been too long in terms of my rambling, but I just wanted you to reflect and recognize that this goes far beyond just trying to learn your first couple of pull-ups, which again is its own benefit. There's nothing wrong with using the assisted pull-up machine or using bands like the way of just doing the negatives and the holds. That's great. That's always gonna be a time tested method, but this can also help when you're first trying to get your pull-ups. And for my novice program, hey, if you wanna do reverse banded pull-ups, I don't have an issue with that either, straight up. It's only problematic if you can get over 30 repetitions which I highly doubt most of you can do. So that's it guys, I plan on using banded pull-ups for one rep maxes, chest to bar pull-ups, and auto regulation. I hope you do the same. Let me know what you think of this exercise and the variations shown, and I'll talk to you all next time.